In a recent report released by SEBI on 25th of January 2023, SEBI stated that 9 out of 10 trades in the FNO equity segment uh, lose money. That means almost 90% of the trades that the individuals and traders are making are actually incurring and ending up in losses. Are you one of them making such losses? Hello everyone, welcome to iExam B, the only platform that helps you to unfold your potential, help you in clearing your doubts and uh, strengthen your concepts so that you can prepare 50% faster with for any kind of competitive exam. In this video, we are going to talk about this report named Analysis of Profit and Loss of Individual Traders Dealing in the Equity FNO Segment, which has been released by SEBI. The one of the key findings from the report is that the FNO traders on the Dalal Street have actually increased exponentially over the period of 2019 to 2022. So this uh, study has been done over a period of 2019 to 2022 and there has been a substantial increase, almost 500% increase in these three years in the number of people who are trading on the FNO segment and almost 89 percent and or 9 out of 10 as they have stated of these individual derivative traders have lost capital that means they have ended up losing money rather than making money or earning a profit and the average loss in general that they have made is around 1.1 lakh so it's not a small amount big amounts of money have been lost by these individual derivative traders so this has been the report and a study that our SEBI has done recently. So we look at some more key findings that are there in the report uh, that has come out. But before I move on, this is not something the individual traders in the FNO segment is not something that SEBI has all of a sudden tried to study. Uh, this is something that, you know, the current chairperson of SEBI, Ms. Madhvi, Madhvi Puri Buch, has been talking about in various other conferences and meetings. One such was in September 2000. 2022, when she was present at the Capital Markets Conference uh, organized by FIKI. Then she had stated that, you know, they are looking at bringing in more rules, more policies to help improve the data sharing and transparency uh, in the FNO segment so that the retail participants, the individual traders basically, they are well aware about the various kind of risks that they are undertaking while uh, you know, entering into such trades. So it's not that by bringing these guidelines, say is trying to restrict any kind of retail participation, but they want and ensure that, you know, uh, people or investors or traders, not investors, actually it's traders, are well aware of the kind of risks that they are entering into. And SEBI has the right policies in place to ensure that they have access to the right amount of data to help them take informed decisions. So this is something, you know, that SEBI uh, has been seeing that there is a lot of retail participation increasing. I'm sure when this uh, 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 conference was held, uh, the chairperson would have noticed that there is a increase in the participation. Now, why could have this increase in participation happened? This is also because of the COVID time. So if you will see the study period is FY19 to 2022. During this period COVID time, many people actually lost jobs or even if they did not, if they did have jobs by working from home, they were trying to get into uh, other activities to, um, you know, earn money. And, uh, you know, with the rise of uh, investment tips and advisories and quick money being made in the FNO segment, many of the people started actually trading. So that has been one reason during this time period. There has been an increase, substantial increase, like the report itself says there is a 500% increase in the number of individual traders during this time period. So seeing all this, SEBI would have been looking at as a regulator and a very, very active regulator, which takes very seriously the protection of interests of the, uh, the various investors and traders in the securities market, they must have done this study. So uh, let's understand first, what is FNO? I've been using this word again and again. We also call it the derivatives market, right? We also call it the derivatives market. Uh, it is 
actually these are two words that stand for futures and options okay so uh, in simple short form we say fno futures and options so these are kind of derivative instruments uh, which are actually used in a uh, on the stock exchange format right so if i'm talking about derivative instruments a derivative instrument is defined as a financial instrument whose value is derived from the value of an underlying asset okay so there's another asset whose underlying who calls the underlying asset and on the basis of this asset the value of the derivative product is uh, decided right so both of them are derivative products in this study we are talking about the equity derivatives okay or the equity uh, fno futures and options right that means the underlying asset here is equity right say for example if there is a reliance shares right so they become the underlying equity or the underlying asset and on this there can be futures there can be options okay similarly there can be index fno where index there are two major index in our country that we follow one is your nifty and the other is your sensex right so they become the underlying asset and there can be futures and options trading related to these assets right so these this is what we mean by the underlying asset and these futures and options which are based on any underlying asset they are deriving their value that means the price of this future is dependent on how the pricing and movement or events are happening in this underlying asset so this is this is a financial product therefore it is a financial instrument it's known as a derivative instrument also so that's the basic futures and options there are various other derivative products also like there are forwards then there are swaps right so these are also that these are other some very common derivative products the difference is these are not traded over the stock exchange so this is more like over the counter we call them otc derivative products where you know two parties uh, uh, enter into an agreement with each other right so the stock exchange is not in between so when uh, the we say fno segment we are talking about the stock exchange related right so this is a brief about the fno now let's understand a little more about these two products so when we are talking about futures and how are they different from each other in a futures contract both of them are fno as i said futures and options both of them are exchange traded stock exchange related these are contracts right in futures what what is happening you are entering into a contract to buy or sell the underlying asset at a future date right so say if i have an underlying asset as nifty okay and then i have a futures on this it is known as an index future of nifty okay so if i buy an index future of nifty basically this underlying asset i am agreeing to buy nifty at a future day say one month ahead okay at a price that i have decided today so maybe i decided at eighteen thousand, i will buy after one month right so this futures contract is actually defining the price today right so that is what a futures contract is right so here i'm shown say if we go on the website of national stock exchange you can find for equity you can find for index here like i'm showing you for state bank of india there is the derivative segment where the underlying asset price is given and then you have the derivative products built on it in case of option what happens is again it's a derivative contract there is a buyer and a seller they agree to buy an underlying asset or sell an underlying asset at an agreed price however in case the buyer of the option feels that the future uh, after one month if i had agreed to buy but this is not turning out to be in my favor okay then i can choose to not go ahead with the contract okay so otherwise what happens in a contract a contract is entered then the both parties are required to honor the contract right aapne agar kuch decision liya hai contract kiya agreement kiya hai to aap us pe stick karenge and aap usko honor karenge to jo bhi aapki obligation hai aap usko fulfill karenge right but uh, what if agar jo humne kyunki ye future ke liye humne kiya somewhere in uh, uh, you know ahead of time we don't know ki that that situation will turn out to be in our favor or not what if it doesn't turn out to be in our favor 
right so in that case an option allows you to not honor the contract or let the honor the contract end and expire on its own without having any obligation to honor it right so this if you if you get this choice whether to honor it or not based on the fact whether it is uh, profitable for you to honor the contract or not if that choice has been given to you then the contract becomes an option right so that's why we call it an option because you have an option to choose right so this gives the owner the right but not the obligation so you have a right to honor it but not obligated to do it uh, to buy and sell the specified quantity of the underlying asset at a particular price on or before the specified time so this is the difference between the futures and options both are related to something in future about a price being decided today for an underlying asset however in case of futures it is obligatory in option whether it is obligatory or not is the option of the buyer of the option so these are the basic understanding of your futures and options contracts so it looks like something very nice right we can use them and in case of an option actually uh, you may say there doesn't seem to be a risk because if it is profitable i will uh, honor it if it is not profitable i will not honor it so sounds very very simple and easy and risk free so is it really like that we will talk about it in a few minutes um, after talking about the report first so now let's come back to the report we had started talking about the report so apart from what i told you is there anything else so the first point that the report had said that yes there are unique individual traders which have substantially increased from FY19 to FY22 and this increase is almost of 500%. So if you look at the data, if you want the exact data, you can see from almost 7 lakh individual traders in FY19, there were some 45.2 lakh traders in FY22. And these we are talking about individual traders who have been taken as sample for the study of this report. Right, and out of this, almost 88% were active traders. So this 88% were active traders. What we mean by active traders is this report defines active traders as people who have at least entered into trading five times <coughs> during this period in a year. Okay, then it also goes on to understand the type of individual traders. So maximum majority individual traders actually fell in the age bracket of 30 to 40 years. But even young traders in the range of 20 to 30 years had seen a substantial increase in participation. So in 2019, when the individual traders between the age range of 20 to 30 years was only 11%, it has substantially increased to 36 percent FFI 22. This is what I was referring to as a lot of people even during the COVID times started trading uh, either because they did not have a job or they lost job during that time or they found more time at hand by working at home to try their hand at trading in the FNO segment. So this has substantially taken an increase during this period. So you can again write in the comments box how many of you fall in this category when you started trading and have been a part of this uh, market. The next finding that was there, the 90% of the active traders have actually incurred losses. And these active traders, average loss has been 1.25 lakh during this period, right? So it's not a small amount that they have been losing. They have put high money at stake and they have actually lost also. And it's a very, very big number saying 90% of the people losing uh, money and not making money, right? Uh, individual traders in the equity FNO segment made profit with an average profit of 1.5 lakhs. So the remaining 10% that we are saying, so 90% to have lost money, but the 10% who have made money, even if you see the average profit that they have made, it's not very substantially high, right? So when you have risked, you have been able to gain 1.5 lakh, but when you've lost, you have lost 1.25 lakh also. So it's not like, you know, there is very high amount of uh, uh, profits that you have made in comparison to the kind of losses that have been made, right? So it's almost similar, but the percentage of people who have made profits is substantially lower. 
Another finding from the report is among all the unique individual traders who traded in the equity FNO segment, 98% traded in the options, right? So I was discussing with you futures and options and uh, you would have seen that options looks like a safer a mechanism or safer derivative product where you can limit your losses you can choose whether you want to uh, enter into whether you want to honor it or not so maybe that's the same kind of thinking that went behind and therefore 98 percent people traded in options uh, there were more people who were trading in options while 11 percent traded in futures uh, in FY22 as compared to 89% in options and 43% in futures in FY19. So in futures, there has been a substantial decline, right, from 43% to 11%. Some of you may be thinking, how is this not adding up to 100? This is because there will be people who would be dealing in both um, uh, options also in futures also so there would be overlapping also but uh, unique they like they are not all unique trades right so that's why there is there but if you see 98 percent in options and only 11 percent in futures as compared to a substantial drop from 43 percent of future trades happening in fy19 to now so a simplistic understanding here is that people have thought options to be riskless and therefore went ahead and traded in options but are they really riskless? The data doesn't show that to be and it doesn't even prove to be. So as we go ahead and discuss about how actually futures and options work, you will understand that it is not risk free, but they're highly risky financial instruments which need good understanding before you can actually dive down into trading and using them for profit. Right. One another last key findings, there have been more, so very important key findings of the report has been that during FY22, over and above the net trading losses, that is this. So if I say on an average, there was 1.25 lakh of loss that was happening. So this was the trading loss, right? So over and above this, the loss makers expended an additional 28% of the net trading loss as transactions cost okay reflecting frequent trading okay so it is not just that they have lost this 1.25 lakh they have lost additional 28 percent why because they paid and they incurred transaction costs right so these transaction costs includes various costs you give to the brokers you pay uh, various fees you have to pay stt securities transaction tax right so there are various kinds of costs that are associated so cumulatively they add up and the more and more you trade of course for every trade that you do every time you have to pay certain uh, cost or transaction cost or commission or tax right so all that so more and more trading you do the more and more your tax cost transaction cost sorry increases that may that's why they are saying this 28 percent additional cost people have incurred over and above the losses and this is also showing that they have not just traded once or twice or even five times as we are defining the active individual traders, but they have actually engaged in frequent trading again and again and again, maybe making an effort to, uh, you know, make a profit in the next trade at least to try to cover up. So, in, but they have ended up getting more and more uh, cost in that process, right? So, as I was saying, so does that mean FNO is bad? Futures and options are bad, they should not be used or the SEBI should not allow people to participate in it. So answer to this will come automatically if you understand how FNO work, right? how futures and options work. Let me take a very simplistic example. Right? Say suppose there is a company A by ABC Limited right? and you expect it to uh, post good results right now. The Companies results season is going on every day. Some company is giving out the results for quarter three, which is ended in December 2022. So they are coming out with their results, right? Say you are seeing a company will come out with its results after a month and you think that the results will be good. They are likely to be good. You have been looking at the company, the kind of its business they are doing and it is likely to be profitable and doing better. And therefore you think that because it will give a good result, its share price will also go up, right? Now, so in future, you expect the share price to go up. So say this company is trading at rupees 500 today and you want to 
make a profit by this shares going up after the results come out right and you expect that this may go up to 550 rupees giving you a 10 percent return right over a period of say one or two months so that is what you are expecting now the first straightforward way can be say you go ahead and buy the shares right that's the simplest way you can go and buy the shares of the company and wait right so maybe say you decide to buy uh, 100 shares right at 500 rupees the current price which is there and you end up paying 50,000 rupees <coughs> and then you wait right you wait till the price goes up now this may go up so you make a profit if it doesn't go up you can uh, you know uh, uh, sit again or you know make a loss that time now the second way can be you buy the futures right now and buying the futures what will happen say the futures price this thing is available at 502 okay so it works like it will calculation will be similar you have 500 maybe you decide to buy 100 uh, futures uh, you buy buy futures which are consisting of 100 shares and again you are paying uh, 50,200 rupees but here is the part you don't pay 50 uh, 50,200 the futures trading can happen at a margin so there is a concept of margin there is initial margin and there is maintenance margin right so you don't have to give the entire money in the futures you can leverage the money so rather than paying the entire 50,000 what you could do mostly like you can say there's a 10% margin if there's a 10% margin you can actually take this position for 100 shares at 10% of the price which is 5,000 to 20 right so if this actually turns out to be correct if this actually turns out to be correct and if you end up making a profit you know if this is 550 minus your cost of 502 48 per share if you are making a profit so this 4800 profit actually you have made by doing an investment of only 5200 so your return goes up substantially your entire money is not blocked you are only blocking 10 percent right so this is a very simplistic example i'm telling you here in futures of course there is a lot more iterations and uh, adjustments that are done because of the maintenance margin and because of a concept called mark to market right i will not explaining you that in detail over here i will give you reference to another video that we have done on derivatives in the past which will help you explain this but futures and options are marked to market that is every day's movement in the price of the underlying asset is adjusted so as to do away with the counterparty risk okay so any kind of risk that the other person will not honor or run away to mitigate that mark to market is done in futures contract okay now the third option is options buying the option right where you can buy the option say and decide that after two months i will buy the stock at 500 from you okay so there may be you decide and you lock in the price yeah you lock in the price that this is the 500 i will give you per share after two months right now if the stock actually goes up to 550 you can decide to exercise it and therefore you will be able to get the stock at 500 despite the fact that in the market it is trading at 550 and if it goes down say it goes to 450 you can decide to not honor it and not buy it right because what you had thought it didn't turn out so you don't buy it but to be able to get this choice you have to pay a price and this price is known as the premium so say the premium was 10 rupees per share right so in that case your total investment would be 10 into 100 and you have paid 1000 rupees as the premium right so if you honor if it goes in your favor and if you decide to buy your profit is there less by the cost of the premium 
right? So 5,000 profit you have made minus 1,000, 4,000 is your net profit. In case it goes to 450 or something against you, you can just not buy it and your loss is only limited to 1,000 rupees what you have paid as premium, right? So this is how the options can work. These are the various ways people can use right to increase their returns improve their returns or bet on future right now this is about what you think this can be a simplistic way still did you get the answer is this bad or good now that brings me to the other point of what it is being used as there are two concepts one hedging and the other speculation. So how you are using futures and options. So when these derivative products were actually brought in, the purpose of these derivative products was mostly to manage risks, right? I'm not saying this is the only purpose. There are various other, it helps to deepen the securities market. It helps in better price discovery, right? So there's a lot of things that are, uh, there are a lot of benefits also that comes from the futures and options and derivative products, right? Uh, like I told you, people can leverage and actually with small investments can also end up uh, and making good amount of uh, money and take positions. So it is a very, very good product and very important in any kind of financial market in any country. However, there are various risks involved and it is very important for people to be aware about those risks before they take positions, right? So when we are talking about two various different aspects, hedging and speculation, these are two purposes which are solved. One is hedging. Hedging is known is about managing risk, okay? or reducing the possibility of risk. So this is hedging and speculation is taking a position in an effort to make profit, right? So you want to make profit, so you take a position with an intention of making a profit and here your intention is to reduce your risk. Okay, so let me explain this with the help of an example. So again, same company, we want, uh, there are 100 shares. So in the last question, um, Example, imagine that you have 100 shares of ABC Limited, right? And you bought that at 500. So we went with the first option straightforward that I bought the shares, right? Now, I have 100 shares of ABC, which I have bought at 500 rupees each. Now, I know the results are going to be come out, are coming in another month or so, but I am also worried whether the results will actually be what I'm thinking it to be. What if the results are bad and the price of the company goes down so i am also have the risk i can i'm not 100 percent sure if the results will be good and the price will go up or not or even if the results are good with the share uh, market on the share price reflect that immediately or over some time or not so i am I am uh, not sure what will happen and therefore I decide to manage my risk and reduce the risk and I can do that with the help of futures by hedging my position. Okay, now what is there? I already have 100 shares which I have bought at 500 rupees. Okay, now I take an opposite position of futures where I sell futures. Okay, I sell rather than buy because I've already bought the shares I already own. So I take an opposite position of selling the futures. Now to match this, I again take 100 shares. Futures are usually in lot sizes. Okay, the contracts have certain lot sizes which have a minimum number of an asset. So say the lot, one lot consists of 50 shares, right? So I will buy two lots because two into 50 will give me worth 100 shares exposure, right? So uh, I take lots, so in futures always things work in lots and I am able to take exposure to 100 uh, shares equivalent futures contract, right? And this I bought at 502. So the futures is deriving its value from the underlying, but because of the time, because futures is about a price in future, they may add the futuristic cost, the carrying cost, right? So it would be a little higher than the spot price of the underlying asset, right? So. Uh, say it is 502 okay now after one month say what happens is the uh, the price actually falls down okay the results don't come out to be good and the price of the shares actually fall down and they come down to 475 similarly for the futures also it is reflected and it falls to 474 
right in that case the decline in my price here in case of equity shares is 25 rupees so i lose 25 rupees a share in total i make a loss of 2500 shares on my shares on my equity shares that i hold however on my futures because i have sold it i have sold it at 502 but the current price is 474 so i have sold at a higher price than the current market price of 474 and therefore i am making a gain of 28 per share or in total i am making a 2800 rupees gain as such i have been able to reduce from a loss of 7, 2500, I have actually ended up making a 300 rupees profit. So here my purpose is not to make a 300 rupees profit, but to save myself from this 2500 loss that could have happened, right? So this is known as hedging, where we are trying to take an opposite position to what I actually have right now to be able to save myself from a prospective loss in future. This is known as hedging and FNO and futures and options are used a lot by for the hedging purpose where a lot of even institutes, big corporates, uh, companies, traders, farmers, they enter into such contracts to help them safeguard against various price movement in future that can impact their business. Right? On the other hand, if I talk about speculation, in speculation, say if here uh, I was actually speculating and not hedging, in that case what was happen is I enter into a futures contract without having any underlying asset. So I am not owning underlying asset but I am using only futures with a a thought process that in future I expect a certain movement in price and accordingly I am betting on it by taking a futures position right so if I expect it to go down in future I am selling futures this is known as short selling and uh, where I have don't have the underlying asset but I'm still selling it this is known as short selling there are various rules by SEBI uh, that restrict short selling uh, again because of the high amount of risk because if you uh, do not own and you have to settle later you can actually end up losing your entire money so here the risk lies and say if you had shot the futures you have sold the futures and when will you make loss will you make loss when the opposite happens so if you had shot at 502 but here after one month actually the price went up to 550 Okay, if the price went up to 550, so here what that means is you would have to buy the shares from the market at 550 and you will be able to sell them at 502 only. So you are making a loss of 48 rupees per share, right? Now this may look very small amount because I have taken in this example only 100 shares. When you are entering into multiple lots and or when you are working on margin, you are betting by money and you are working on margin, you can actually end up losing your entire margin money on an everyday basis when the trades are being marked to market. So this is how FNO can be dangerous if you don't understand how they work and you bet big money without really understanding how they function. If you know, want to know more details about these uh, derivative products, FNO and also more derivative products, you can watch another video on our YouTube. You will find the link in the comments box also uh, where Shikha Ma'am has explained in a lot of detail the basics of derivatives and also how they function and what are the SEBI uh, various guidelines related to them. Moving ahead, why traders do you think have lost money? right so as i was explaining you in options also it is not as simple as it looks it's not like you can restrict you you will not honor because honoring happens on the date of expiration but before that every day mark to market is being done that means any adverse movement in your position uh, the, uh, the, uh, the extent to which that adverse movement has been done will be reduced from the money that you have deposited with the broker to undertake the transaction. So that money can keep getting depleted if till the time of expiry your position is not turning in your favor. So like this people can end up losing a lot of money plus addition to that is a various kind of transaction costs. So people have limited understanding of the product 
uh, they only understand one definition and think that there is no risk involved which is incorrect so you have to understand the proper mechanism of how futures and options function what are the initial margin and the maintenance margin requirements by a broker what are the kind of costs that are involved and how everyday mtm mark to market takes place before you can actually enter into transactions and use them to make profit Another very big reason is blindly following investment tips. During the COVID time specifically, a lot of investment tips specifically using futures and options that can be used to make a lot of money was seen everywhere on WhatsApp, on uh, social media, on YouTube. You could see a lot of people in turning into investment advisors and trying to tell you how quickly quick money can be made. So these are all baits. Please don't fall for them without understanding how the market operates. SEBI does not allow anybody to give investment tips. So to be an actual advisor and investment advisor, you need to be registered with SEBI, right? So please don't follow unauthentic advices without understanding the risks involved. So a lot of people had actually done that thinking this is quick money sitting at home. They can very easily make profits and they have ended up losing money. Then trading as a hobby or part time again with some uh, time at hand or because of people losing uh, jobs or um, uh, you know getting uh, lured by uh, advertisements stating that they can uh, make quick money at home by investing uh, people took trading as a hobby they started doing it and they were doing it part time without un paying full attention it's actually requires it's not that trading is bad but it requires full time involvement okay i prachi gola i have been in the equities market uh, previously i have worked at it however as of now i cannot do this because i cannot give full time attention to trading so and also please understand trading is different it's very different from investment right so you can do investment and you should do investment okay uh, uh, even if you are doing a job and all because this is helps in your long term planning so investment one should do but not trading so trading requires full time of yours and cannot be taken up as a hobby or a part time exercise and uh, trading too much because if you are involved in too much trading in and out your anxiety levels go up your transaction go, uh, goes up right so all that is very important and as i told you anxiety levels go up so if you are into trading if you want to do this it requires a lot of patience and a lot of discipline so if uh, one cannot do that they should not really get into trading if they do they end up losing a lot of money right so these are few things that would have led to i'm not saying this is these are the only reasons or they will always lose uh, lead to losing money the only thing that i am trying to tell here is that before taking any any trading activity one needs to be uh, aware about the risks and take an informed decision even for your investments you should always try to take an informed decision and sebi as a regulator very very strong regulator has been working over the years to ensure that there the our markets work as efficiently as possible that there is no insider trading taking place that all kind of information that should be in the public domain has been is shared with all kind of investors and they help uh, to that they can take an informed decision so all kind of investments and trading if you choose to do always try to do by taking an informed decision right what else can you notice in this report this i will tell you here this report has been made by the department of economic and policy analysis right now this is an, why i'm highlighting this is when sebi recruits at the grade a level there are vacancies that come out in general and there are also vacancies that come out at the research so this is from the last year in 2022 at research they had 
you know recruited they had vacancies for seven posts and here people who are eligible to apply here include people from statistics economics commerce business administration finance or econometrics who are eligible if they have a master's degree right and these people many times people ask me what will be in the research department the research department works in any organization or a regulatory organization works like a think tank where they are providing insights they are doing various kind of analysis studies um, um, and uh, you know uh, they working research papers that they work on which helps to give a lot of conclusions and insight to the regulator to help make the policy so it's a very important department in any regulatory body uh, it, they work like a think tank as i said if you aspire to be uh, a part of the regulator if you want to be in policy making either through research or in the general side you should go through this report it is available on the website of sebi you can look at the kind of data collection they have done the kind of studies they have taken uh, done in this the kind of correlation that they have worked out so it's a very very good report and if you are specifically interested in the research department i would encourage you to actually read this report in detail so thanks that's all for today i hope uh, this uh, session has helped you to get some insight and uh, if you are watching this and you are look to prepare for sebi grade a officer write in your comments box what motivated you to prepare for this exam or why do you want to become a sebi grade a officer Uh, before i end i would like to tell you about an ongoing offer at i exam b where all online courses at i exam b are available at a flat 70% discount by using the code flat 70 this offer is available on the 28th of january for 24 hours so if you want to take any advantage you want interest in any any online course please take advantage of this offer thanks everybody uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that we can help you prepare 50% faster at i exam